welcome students to rats and pathology we shall be continuing with bone and joints and for today's class i have chosen a couple of short notes difficult for the students but important in the examination the first one is paget's disease of the bone please be careful with the words there is another disease paget's disease of the breast that is also asked for you as a university question we should not interchange and write this is also called as osteitis deformans it is a disordered proliferation resulting in a structurally ineffective bone ineffective in the sense it is not able to support and it is also described as 3m what are the 3m metabolic matrix madness please remember this disorder proliferation metabolic matrix madness there are three stages of the disease namely osteolytic osteolytic and osteoblastic combined osteosclerotic or burnt out it was first identified by sir james paget a british surgeon and pathologist more than 100 years back that is nearly 130 years back he suggested a viral etiology as a cause of the disease and probably paramyxo virus was the causative agent and over the century there were many debates and counter debates various suggestions and now ultimately people have agreed that it is because of a viral infection probably respiratory syncytial virus or a measles virus and in all these you find that there is a micro cylindric inclusions that can be found in the lesion the age and cause age it is uncommon below 40 years more common after 50 to 60 years and it grows progressively the distribution is common in europe and america uncommon in asia one thing that we should remember is the rankle what is this rankle receptor activation of nuclear factor for the kappa light chain of the b cell very long but we shall remember it is important and it can be an mcq for us rankle regarding the types there are basically two types of paget's disease one is monoostotic other is polyostotic monoostotic means a single bone is affected polyostotic multiple bones are affected and what are the bones that are affected in paget's it will be the central axis let us remember the central axis mainly that means spine pelvis skull this is one other bones can be the femur and the tibia and in this picture i am finding a very haphazard laying down of the new bone these are the osteocytes and these are mosaic lines and the bony trabeculae are being demarcated we shall explain the stages first is osteolytic which means there is a disordered desorption of bone there are two cells basically the osteoclast and the osteoblast in the bone the osteoclast helps in removing the unwanted bone whereas the osteoblast lays down new bony matrix 
in this stage you find that there is a disordered removal by the osteoclast the next stage is a combined osteolytic and an osteoblastic stage there is resorption as well as haphazard laying down of bone bone both are there simultaneously and it produces a mosaic like picture in the bony tissue the last one is the osteosclerotic stage which is almost a burnt out the end stage but then the bone that has been formed is disordered and poorly supported it is prone for fractures three stages please remember and i am again showing you this picture for the sake of understanding if you do not understand please compare this bony tissue with this this is the normal bony trabeculae that is there in us you find that the cells that are rimming it are the osteoblast and they lay down the new bone these are the osteocytes such a structure is not seen in a case of patients what are the manifestations of the paget's disease one will be pathological fractures though there is a thickening there can be a fracture of the bone bowing of the bones bending the femur can be almost at right angle in the side of the neck the skull there is a leonitis ossea thickening of the bone will lead to a change producing a lion like skull the bones are heavy there is an arrowing of the foramina in the vertebrae there is kyphoscoliosis forward or lateral bending paraplegia due to compression and the same points are mentioned here another one is flattening of the base of the skull producing a platybasia one of the nerves that can be compressed will be the eighth cranial nerve a point of importance will be the malignant transformation osteosarcoma and fibrosarcoma can develop in patients who have got pages the type of osteosarcoma here is called a secondary osteosarcoma so the diagram of the paget and here you see the skull this is the inner and the outer table you find between that there is laying down of the bony material leading to widening of the diploma and there is also an increase in the size of the skull so what happens as a result of this the patient keeps repeatedly changing his hat these are given in your bailey in love the textbook of surgery this is an important question for you in surgery as well as orthopedics and this picture shows a pegetoid bone developing a pathological fracture and is also prone for osteogenic sarcoma the bowing of the bones we had mentioned look at this one the bones have become almost c shaped there is a bend of the bone the tibia is one of the bones that can be affected it is very coarse and it is called as sabre tibia s a b r e it is seen in conditions such as pages disease as well as syphilis as a summary of the pages we shall be seeing the definition what are the types of it the causes for pages the manifestations what are the bones that are affected and the stages this is particularly important the three stages we will have to mention the complications which can include compression of the nerves pathological fractures or malignant transformation and the next topic for the day is gout <clears throat> this again is a short note a little complex but we shall see how we can deal with it 
gout itself is not a disease it is a generic term generic is a generalized term that is used for varied disorders that are not related to each other you will see that when you see the cause there are a number of disorders which are not related to each other and that is also described as disparate disparate mean varied the common manifestations in gout are four things one hyperuricemia two acute arthritis three asymptomatic intervals between the attacks and four a chronic tophaceous gout four stages you shall remember and this is a mnemonic i picked up from the net a common bone that can be affected is a great toe one joint is usually involved in most cases uric acid crystals and urolithiasis this will be the culprit and tophe this is a lesion seen in chronic gout g o u t this mnemonic you shall remember and this is a picture of an acute gout you can see that there is a swelling there is a redness there is a stretching of the skin obviously all the signs of inflammation are there and the patient will be having excruciating pain which is depicted in a picture over here look at this the harm that is being created on to a joint the causes for gout are divided into the primary gout and the secondary causes the primary causes primary means usually we do not know but then there can be some underlying condition such as hyperuricemia after all uric acid is being produced so there is hyperuricemia males are more prone obesity and insulin resistance go hand in hand with gout alcohol can induce a gout a purine rich diet and a defect in the uric acid metabolism are the most important features which can lead to gout there is a disorder called as the leish nehan syndrome in which there can be a gout along with that there can be other features which we shall be seeing so these are all the primary causes for gout please read them secondly two things we shall be remembering one is a renal disorder any chronic kidney disease because of the impaired excretion of the uric acid can lead to gout the second one is a myeloproliferative disorder or any malignancy all the nuclei can lead to uric acid so whenever there is a condition with increased nucleic acid turnover there will be a gout and that includes malignancies and leukemia this is a picture of the gout so compared to the first picture you find that there is no redness over here of course the swelling is here it is not as painful as the original one this is called a gouty surface and this is a diagram of it this is a joint space in which i am seeing the monosodium urate crystals and as a result of which there is a deposition of amorphous material which is the tophus amorphous material is deposited this can destroy the joint surface tophus is another word that can be used in conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis also please remember you people can draw this diagram the manifestations of gout there is an acute arthritis severe unbearable pain there is outpouring of the leukocytes when you study under the microscope lot of neutrophils will be there and these are all because of the crystals of monosodium urate the leukocytes are attracted towards it these crystals are long needle shaped birefringent and when you see it in a hne they are non staining they appear plain and all the inflammation is because of the hegemon factor and the other inflammatory mediators which we had studied in the first chapters the sites that can be affected are 
the great toe the ankle the lower extremity mainly if it is chronic you find that there can be a disabling renal disorder as well as a disabling arthropathy in chronic arthritis so this this is called a panus it can be seen in some sites such as the digits in the joint the ear lobule is another site where we can get a gouty tophus and there is a precipitation of the urate initially they cover the joint surface this is followed by the proliferation of the synovial cells and the formation of panus what is panus it is nothing but a cellular material that is deposited around crystals such as monosodium urate finally if it is not treated the underlying bone is also destroyed these are the inflammatory cells we will again be seeing a picture of this lymphocytes macrophages and the giant cells the sites we had mentioned i will not be repeating apart from the skeletal system other organs can be affected namely the kidney in the kidney two things can happen one is nephrolithiasis nephrolithiasis means formation of stones due to uric acid and also there is an affection of the interstitium interstitium is the supporting tissue that is also damaged that is called uric acid nephropathy and tophus incidentally the latin word means stone so it is a stone like lesion that we are seeing in gout look at the slide a histological slide the three arrows i have drawn please follow them this is the a cellular space in which i am finding if you can observe there are some needle shaped structures so this is the tophus around that i find multinucleated giant cells see the number of nuclei multinucleated giant cells there are also other large cells which are seen through there are the they are the histiocytes so it is given here giant cell histiocyte and the panus please remember this in histology you need not draw but you can mention these This is a normal uric acid metabolism. I am not going into it. In this condition, you find there are two lesions basically. One is an increased amount of turnover of cells, which can produce increased nucleic acid, and then the metabolism. And finally, you find that there is uric acid excess, which can lead to a gout. The second condition is when there is an impaired renal excretion. when there is impaired renal excretion uric acid is retained this again leads to uric acid crystals and gout so this is a normal metabolism and here you find these are the abnormalities remember these two things in the box a differential diagnosis you will score a mark if you people write pseudo gout what is the pseudo gout gout we have already seen we see birefringent crystals here it is pink in color and the crystals are needle shaped whereas here they are rhomboid or rectangular monosodium urate whereas here it is calcium pyrophosphate found in the small joints such as the big toe this is mainly found in the knee joint so these are the differences even otherwise remember that there is a condition called pseudo gout what can be the investigation main things alone we shall remember joint aspirate will be showing monosodium urate crystals which can be demonstrated by using a microscope called polarizing microscope so this is very 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 important we'll at answer the renal function is affected so renal function test will be abnormal when you examine the patient there may be a tumor or there may be a leukemia 
we'll have to look for this the increase in wbc is an esr is an incidental filing which is not very specific so again repeat urate crystals polarizing microscope abnormal renal functions and presence of a leukemia radiology is very important in which i can find that there can be an erosion of a bone and the blue arrow points to the deposition called as tropus so radiology and i here i find a club shaped expansion of the bone a word about the syndrome called the lesnehan syndrome it affects a patient who has got a little bit of personality disorder associated with hypoxanthin guanin phosphoribosyl transferase so he is a hyperactive person he has had a habit of self mutilation and there is choreoathetosis random purposeless movements are there these are the features of lesch nehan syndrome and we are coming to the close before that this is a brook men may come and men may go but i go on forever a very nice poem that has been written by alfred lord tennyson the brook mercy